Love it. Hello hey, and welcome go. to. <laughs> Sorry, <I> got. <laughs> Hello, welcome to episode. I think it's 153. It's going to be one of those episodes. I feel already. Episode 153 of Heroes of Handheld, the podcast dedicated to handheld gaming. So we like to talk about Vita, 3DS, uh, iOS devices, and even Android devices. Well, we used to, but not anymore because someone got rid of their Android phone. Great. Great. Anyway, I'm Colin. I'm one of your hosts. I've been your host since the very beginning of the podcast over three years ago. Three years it's been since we started this podcast. Absolutely cray cray. Uh, but I've been here since the beginning. And the another man who's been there since the beginning is over there in London town, uh, next to the Pineapple Building, waiting for Lord Sugar to come in and shake his hand. It's Mr. Chris Pearson. Hello, Colin Byrne. How are you today? I'm all right. Got a bit of a headache, but you know it's on on yeah. the and upwards with the show. You know, the show must go on no matter how we feel. Uh, so I think this week we're going to try and do a, a cheeky short uh, edition of the podcast. Uh, we normally mm. go for about 45, 55 minutes, but this week we're going to try for half an hour, which will probably um, go out the window because we always end up going over. But we'll try our very, very very best first thing i want to talk about this week and me and chris were briefly discussing this before we started recording the new trailer oh, has just oh, okay yeah <laughs> well, that as well little shop little shop horrors well, that is a that's a long story uh what, what i want to talk about is the uh trailer for passengers the new um sci-fi thriller starring chris pratt and jennifer lawrence a lot of hype about this film, a lot of teasers online, but now we've got a full-blown trailer. And boy, oh boy, does it look good. I wasn't expecting to be as excited as I was. It gave me goosebumps, Christopher. That's how good I thought that trailer was. So I will definitely be seeing that. I can't wait. But uh, I don't think Chris has seen it yet. You haven't yeah, watched I, it. I've not watched it yet. Um, and I'm just reading the history of it. You know, originally... It was going to have Keanu Reeves and Reese Reeves with Reese Witherspoon in it. Well, they, we dodged the bullet there, didn't we? Oh, I'll dodge the bullet. Ah. Hey, Keanu Reeves is very good. I can do a really good Keanu impression if you're keen. All we need to do is lay flat on the ground and look like a wooden plank. And that would be hey, a Colin, it's me, Keanu Reeves. That's Nicolas Cage, isn't it? That's Nicolas Cage. Hey, Colin, it's me, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Pretty much exactly the same. What was the film I saw on, on Face Off? Have you ever seen Face Off? I want to take his face hey. off. Oh, oh, my God, that film is so <laughs> shit. So good. Oh, my God, so good. I'm trying to think of, like... Um, Oh, like the bit where he's like he sees his face and he's got Nicholas uh, John Travolta's got uh, is it John Travolta? Yeah, he's got Nicholas Cage's face, and he's like he's the staring at everyone, throwing things around, going "f you, f you, so f you." It's so he keeps good. going up to his going up to his kids, isn't he? He's, I think he's got a daughter and a wife, and his yeah. thing is to put his hand across half, half their face and then cover it. It's like, <laughs> what does that even mean? Symbolism for face off. Um, oh my god, so good. Nicolas Cage also in the Wicker Man remake. Oh, what's the famous quote from that? Oh, no, no, not the bees. Not the bees. Ah! Ah! If, if seriously, if you search Nicolas Cage's best bits, you're going to have a great time. It really is a lot of fun, I must say. Another thing I've been into lately is dank memes. I'll just leave that there. I'm really into those dank memes. <laughs> Right. Uh, should we do some news? <laughs> Let's talk about Colin. Let's talk about uh, Colin. What's Colin no, got to do with it? Colin. Let's, More. Let's talk about Apple. Uh, their exciting new patent for a new design of paper bag. This is really exciting. People are nicknaming this code name iBag. How exciting. How, uh, hot off the heels of the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus and the iWatch 2 announcements, we're getting a bag. A bag, people. Um, but uh, to be more serious about this, it was this was painted back in March, actually, but it's only just been discovered now by the online um, army of people who can find things like this in the bowels of the internet. Uh, basically, this looks like a new paper bag that uh, Apple are going to be introducing into their shops around the UK. But this confused me a little bit because... Do many people walk out of Apple shops using a carrier bag? Because most things you buy are quite big. Or a, uh, well, I'm, I'm actually pretty much the only thing. I guess, an, I guess an iPad box, an iPhone box would fit in there. Instead, actually, most things would fit in a paper bag. I was just imagining 
like a new iMac in a box, like put, trying to put it in a plastic bag and carrying it out the shop. I just, I just couldn't imagine that. Um, but this is really interesting. This, this is breaking. This is the, the best news we've got this week, people. So really buckle in for this. Um, so the summary of the patent, which was filed with the US Patent and the Trademark Office, said uh, a paperback. This is what was said in the patent. A paper bag is disclosed. The paper bag may include a bag container formed of white solid bleach sulfate paper with at least 60% post-consumer content. Oh, it's, uh, it's not a problem I, re- I knew needed fixing, but I'm kind of, it's interesting, isn't it? They're also going to have I knitted mean, handles you know. to make it more comfortable when you carry the bag. So, you know, mm. always forward thinking, always being the trendsetters. I see uh, all the bags in your local supermarkets changing now to have fabric handles. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, so, yeah, new bag. And people are calling it the eye bag. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great little device to put your new iPhone 7 into, though, isn't it? If, you, if you're going into an Apple store to buy an iPhone. I mean, do, do many people. Here's a question for you. When people are queuing up to buy the new iPhones, do they actually go to the Apple stores or do they go to the uh, network providers? Because surely if you go to an Apple store, you can't get a contract. You're just buying the phone, aren't you? And just buying the phone on its own is absolutely ridiculously priced. It's like you're looking about 700 quid. My, um, one of my friends on Facebook was in the queue to buy the new iPhone and they... Uh, they, I don't know how long he said he'd been queuing for it, but it'd been like, I think he'd been there overnight. Twat. Wow. And uh, <laughs> they came out, and once a few of them got in, they came out and said the rest have been sold out. You, uh, you're not going to get it. Oh, my God. But surely they would know how many they've got, and they could calculate to stop people. Yeah, and, uh, well, people will oh. buy them online, don't they? I think the because um, you're, you know, you're kind of guaranteed to get it shipped rather than if you go in queue. You don't know, do you? It's interesting. I guess so. But apparently the iPhone 7 Plus has already sold out everywhere. So that sort of tells mm-hmm. you that the price isn't stopping people. Honestly, I, I, just, I just don't get it. I don't get people who buy a new iPhone every single um, year. I mean, I can understand if you've got a pay-as-you-go um, contract for a Apple for an Apple phone, but if you're stuck in a trad with a network provider, normally the contracts are now um, for 28 months and uh, not 24 months. They're two-year contracts. So if you're buying a new phone every year, surely you're having to buy yourself out of your contract every single year. Yeah, I don't know how people do it to be honest. Because you got more money than sense probably. Yeah, uh, what they should be spending their money on is the new colours of PlayStation Vita. Woo! Me. Hey, Colin. Hey. Why is Nick Cage not being a James Bond villain? I think it's because he's gone so far down the line now, Nicholas Cage. He's sort of a parody of himself. He's sort of thing like he sort. He's, you don't really take him seriously, do you? you I mean, yeah, I guess if he was a Bond villain, you you wouldn't see him as a Bond villain. Like you wouldn't think, oh, he's playing this character. You just see it as Nicholas Cage. You know. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. That's why people like Christopher Waltz were fantastic Bond villains because they just play bad guys really well. And if you hear Christopher Waltz talk normally in interviews, he just he just casually when he's talking normally sounds like sounds like a, a bad guy. You know, he's got such a very cold. Well, because he's German. Voice. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Chris said that, not me. Not it me. Is a bit Chris, what you're go- it is a bit what you're going for. I'm going to no, be honest. I'm saying because the tone of his voice, it's not like his accent or anything. It's just like he's very, um, I don't know, like the sort of um, villain you'd go sitting on a chair with a cat across his lap, stroking it. Like like always the same tone or same Spoilers. volume of what he did. Oh shit! I did. You know what? You know what? I actually <laughs> didn't even clock what I just did there. So um, yeah, that. if you've not seen uh, Spectre, Zoz. <laughs> <laughs> should we do some? Uh, should we do some newsy newsy news? How can I live? How can I breathe? I can hear I'm suffocating. I hated that song so much, so much. Right, uh, yes, Chris, give me some Nintendo news because I've pretty much got nothing this week. Um, okay, well, let's let's rattle through some stuff then. So, rattle. if you're into your Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, we're at that point of the year now where every week there's going to be more Pokemon news. Uh, first of all, Nintendo of America have confirmed that that really cool black and white chalk-looking uh, 3DS XL, new 3DS XL, is coming to the state 
28th of October. We'll embed a tweet. You can uh, order it from their website. It's $199. It looks really nice. This is already, I think, being confirmed for Europe, but you know, now there's the option to get it stateside as well, where it looks really nice. Uh, also, in Pokemon Sun and Moon news, there is uh, the trailer came out earlier this week, which shows all the like kind of exclusive Pokemon that either come to Sun or Moon version, depending on which you go for. Mate, they look sick, right? Sun version gets his really cool one. It's called like Pissimian. It's kind of like a, I guess like a chimp with a coconut head. Uh, whereas Moon version gets a thing called Oranguru, which is a massive orangutan. It's all purple. Uh, they also showed off that depending on which version you get, um, if you catch one of the basic uh, dog type Pokemon it's called Rockruff, it will either evolve into this cool wolf thing uh, called Lycan Rock if you get the Sun version, or into a kind of weird werewolf thing if you get the Moon version. So that's cool. You can watch the trailer on heroesfanhub.wordpress.com. And uh, also, Nintendo Everything got the story on this, but it looks like Pokemon Bank compatibility will come to Sun and Moon in January 2017. If you don't know what Pokemon Bank is, it's the, uh, the idea is that you can upload your Pokemon to this kind of online thing thing and then download them onto other versions of the game uh, it's an easy way of getting pokemon across uh you can check out this there's a really good article on cerebina and also uh, nintendo world as we just said if you want nintendo everything sorry if you want some more news on that but yeah it looks like it's going to come january 2017 tentatively uh which is a bit later than they thought but i guess you know at least it's coming that's the main thing uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I'm getting really excited for. I think I'm actually going. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it, Colin, mm. but I I think I will now because it's enough new stuff that it looks like it's going to be interesting. I thought you bought every Pokemon game. Um, I've bought. No, I'm not going that good a record of buying them. To be honest, I didn't buy the remakes last year. I did oh, buy one of the X and Ys. I did buy Heart Gold. I skipped entirely black and white, and then you're back in the GBA one. So, um, yeah, no, they've not got a great track record, to be honest, but I will uh, I will be getting on the next one. You prick. Um, right. All right. That's, that's good. Was the last ones they released X and Y? Were they the last ones? No, or? the last ones that came out, well, there was the remakes last year, which were Omega Sapphire and Alpha, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, which were the ones which uh, were remakes of the GBA games. And everyone laughed about too much water. I don't know if that meme came into your uh, centrifuge. I'm more into the uh, Harame memes, to be honest with you. Harame? Harame died for our sins. Anyway. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who that is, mate. Please tell me you're joking. No, move on. You need to Google Harame memes right now. Colin, move, Colin mate, move on. Get please, your dick out and move on. Please, uh, have, you be, have you signed a waiver at your uh, corporation where you can't talk about Harame? You can possibly comment on these things. Right, so there's a bit of uproar this week on the PlayStation in the PlayStation Vita community. And it all is down to Bandai Namco and Digimon World Next Order. So this is the latest game in the Digimon World um, series of games. Uh, most of them have come to PlayStation Vita, very popular game series. If you don't know what Digimon is, then where were you in the 90s and the early 2000s? But there you go. Just, just before you get into this, who was your favorite Digimon? I never watched it. Really? Don't, don't have a clue. I know it was just Pokemon, right. but they spoke. That's all I you're know about it. You're an idiot. It's all about Gabumon, who turns into Garurumon, who turns into where Garurumon, and then he kicks the restaurant owner across a beach. Um, okay, there you go. Uh, right, so Digiworld Next Order is a game that's coming to um, Sony consoles next year. So as I said, um, most of the time, pretty much most games in the series have come to PlayStation Vita. So Bandai Namco are pretty good at uh, bringing their games to the uh, PlayStation Vita. So there was a bit of uproar this week when a announcement was made from Bandai Namco saying that Digimon World Next Order was only coming to PlayStation 4. And obviously this caused a lot of up, uh, outrage from PlayStation Vita owners because they're like, why is it only coming to PS4? You know, this is a place you want to play on PlayStation Vita. What's going on? So then Bandai Namco released another statement saying that it would actually be coming to PlayStation Vita. So they confirmed the game was going to be coming um, to America, a retail release, and also a um, 
Uh, I think it was a digital only PlayStation Vita release as well in the West. But then they backtracked again, and another statement was released saying that they were incorrect, and it's not coming to the, <laughs> it's not coming to the uh, West at all. So the we're not going to be getting Bandai Namco. No, no. We're not going to be getting Digimon World Next Order at all on PlayStation Vita. It's only coming to PS4, which is a shame, really, because as I said, these games are very popular, and um, you know most of them over the past few years have come to PlayStation Vita. But I think the reason people are all riled up about this is how it's gone back and forth. People didn't know what was going on. Was it coming to Vita? Was it not? It's almost like Bandai Namco put the work experience kid in in control of releasing the um, the press releases about this. It's just bad that they came out and said it is coming to PlayStation Vita in the West. And then they backtrack the same day saying, no, we are wrong. It's not coming to Vita. It's only coming to PlayStation 4. So it's very interesting. But for those of you who care, uh, Digimon World Next Door is going to feature over 200 Digimon. And it's going to let players travel with and raise and train two Digimon at once. So what's better than one Digimon? Two Digimon. There you go. Uh, so the story is set with players being sucked into the Digi world uh, to discover it is under siege by the Machine Dramons. Do you know what they are, Chris, as a Digimon fan? Uh, I don't know what they are, no. Machine Dramons. Uh, rescued by two Digimon from impending doom, players must forge forward, uh, forge forward with their Digimon partners and journey through the Digi world to discover the origins origins of the Machine Durum sc Scourge and find a way back to the real world. So there you go. Uh, but uh, it's disappointing because this, this is not coming to PlayStation Vita. Uh, they might change their mind again, but it's really interesting looking on the PlayStation Vita subreddit over the past week. There's so many posts saying, it's PS4 only. It is coming to PlayStation Vita. And what's really sad is one person on Reddit put a post saying, we did it, guys. Bandai Namco are bringing Digimon World next order to the Vita. But no, they're not. Uh -huh. So there's like a big celebration on the Vita subreddit thinking that um, like the community, the uproar had caused Bandai Namco to backtrack. But no, they haven't backtracked at all. It's not coming to Vita. So that's a shame. I mean, if, it does, if this does change, uh, we will let you know. But at the moment, um, there's no plans to bring the Vita. It's PS4 only, which is very sad. But, Colin, but every Colin. PS4 game is playable on the Vita using crossplay. Oh, yes. the uh, Everyone's favorite PlayStation 4 accessory, the Vita. <laughs> bum, bum. That's opening a whole other catalog. Yeah, maybe we won't. Uh, your, your turn. Go. Do you remember a thing that came, I think it came to Vita, called Corpse Party? Oh, I do remember this. I remember watching lots of Let's Plays, and I was going to play it because there was only a couple of quid on the PlayStation Vita store, but I never got around to downloading it. It's still a game I want to play. It's very, very creepy. Um, it's sort of like a visual mm. novel um, ghostly thing, isn't it? Yeah. Quite creepy. Quite well, dark. we weren't ever sure. It, it was uh, confirmed for the States for a while, but no one ever knew if it was going to come to Europe. However, it looks like someone on Twitter... But it is uh, out in Europe. Well, on 3DS. Oh, right. No one cares about 3DS. So, so. All right. Well, that, that's, the, that's the news, isn't it? That's what you want. That, that's literally half of this podcast, Colin, is contributions yeah. about games on 3DS. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. chances are, if I'm talking about a game coming to Europe, it's probably because it's coming out to Europe on 3DS. Yeah? Most likely. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. Come on. I, I, see Come what you're on. I see what you're saying. Makes sense. So, uh, Courts Party, someone on Twitter, a chap called Nintendo Hall, has uh, discovered that there is a listing for it on the shop uh, for Courts Party 3DS and should be coming out 26th of October, which is, I think, my dad's birthday. Oh. Yeah, so that would be a nice present for him. Happy birthday. Uh, so, uh, the price is, the rumoured price is, I think it's 30 euros, which I don't know if that's expensive. I've not played the game. Hmm. yeah 30 euros i don't know but anyway uh so this is exciting if you're a fan of courts party uh you can keep your eyes peeled for that there's also i thought we'd talk about very briefly really interestingly you know atlas yeah who are who are a good bunch of guys uh they and gals. yeah and gals yes yeah, sorry hmm. uh i didn't mean it in that way but sure they're a good bunch of eggs um and alice have posted this really interesting blog because basically shin megami tensi 4 uh, which is on the cusp of uh, European release, I think, uh, Apocalypse, has got some uh, Japanese text still buried in it. And someone discovered it uh, because it's to do like towards a fight at the end. 
Mm. And basically, it's just really interesting because instead of just ignoring it, they've kind of put this big blog up and they're saying, oh, here's what's happened. Here's why these things happen in games. Uh, you know, we're a big studio. This is human error. These mistakes happen. Like just a really interesting explanation and kind of acknowledgement of things that they've done wrong. Uh, and they're going to be doing an update, but uh, they don't know what, when that will happen. Uh, but when it does, they'll let everyone know, obviously. But it's just an interesting blog to read. You can, uh, we'll put a link to it on the article for this podcast, uh, heroespanel.wordpress.com, if you want to give it a read. Uh, yeah, it's just interesting kind of them putting their hands up to their faults, you know, and saying, like, we, we messed up. Here's why it happened. That's good. I'm, I'm glad that they've actually owned up to their mistake. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, let, do you want me to finish off? F- finish me off. Finish me off. Okay. Uh, well, I'll put it in my mouth. Um, this, there's a game that's been confirmed for European release called Pick on Tier, which is, uh, it was shown off at the Tokyo Game Show. It's made by Fly High Works and Skipmore. Uh, Circle Entertainment are bringing it to the West. It's a slow living miniscape RPG. You can see the trailer on uh, the website here as handheld. Uh, if you have a little look, it looks quite fun. Uh, it's coming to PS4 and Steam as well. Uh, it looks very slow moving, kind of quirky, but quite nice all the same. So we'll put a link up to that. No news on when or anything like that, but just the, just the announcement. And finally, the great Ace Attorney 2 has been announced to be coming to the 3DS. So it came out in Japan last year. Um, and it looks like it's going to be coming to Japan, uh, the sequel, hopefully next year, made by Capcom. Um, you know, Ace Attorney we're a big fan of and uh yeah it just looks really interesting there's a ship there's a girl stood by a grave there's an island there's a bunch of people pointing i'm sure it'll be great fun uh it's nice and steampunky we'll embed a little trailer so you can watch that as well but what are the people pointing at chris that is the question we're all like, it's, it is right if you're on the google plus doc if you're on the hangout right now Colin, on youtube you will see it's them doing this to the camera you know you see? You know, you you know, know that. Yeah. It's this! Objection! Yeah, it's exactly that sort of vibe. So, uh, yeah, that's been announced to come out uh, sometime in Japan. Marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. Yeah. That What's really going on with you? Great. I've got one more bit of news I just want to talk about. So, a game that everyone's very excited about. Darkest Dungeon has finally got a firm release date. Uh, you can play this game from September the 27th on the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. It's going to be cross buy and cross saves. I've spoken about this game before. It's a very interesting rogue like RPG dungeon crawler. Uh, from a company called Red Hook Studios. It was initially funded through Kickstarter back in 2014 for PC, uh, and then obviously it re- reached some stretch goals and uh, came to was going to PlayStation Vita basically because of those stretch goals. Uh, but we finally got a release date, and it's going to be very exciting to play this. I believe this is the game where you have to look after. You have a group, a clan, and if you don't look after them, they can die of like natural causes, so of heart attacks and things, if you don't keep them um, de-stressed and calm throughout the, your uh, journey. Uh, but it's really interesting. I think there's going to be a discount as well for PlayStation Plus. Oh yeah, so for two weeks, um, to celebrate the launch, there's going to be a 20% PlayStation Plus discount for the game, uh, both on Vita and PlayStation 4. I just wanted to mention this, though, because it's nice to actually have a confirmation of a uh, indie game like this coming to the Vita after we've had so many games like Cancel over the past few weeks actually another game's been cancelled but it didn't really have a big um song and dance about it a game called ronin which was a indie game about a samurai uh, i believe um, that was initially coming to playstation vita but that has now been cancelled as well and what's great is the guy who's developing it hasn't even, hasn't really even given a reason as to why he said sorry or not we're coming to playstation vita now and that was actually all he said it's almost like okay Okay, there you go. Um, so we last heard news about it back in 2015, and um, it was a, that's a turn-based uh, stealth-killing game. Uh, it looked pretty cool, um, but a shame that's not coming to beta now. But there you go. So that's all I wanted to talk about. I'm done. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye all best. Bye. Sleep, sleep well. Drive safe. Um, Take care. Best of the best of the family. All best. All the best. Is that um, it? Have you, have you had the, the phone call about hosting Bake Off yet? Um, not yet. Um, I've got a few missed calls though, and I yeah. think uh, I know that Mary Berry keeps bloody you know, calling me. I'm getting a bit fed up, to be honest. Yeah. Like, if she wants some advice Paul on Hollywood how to, just... <laughs> Paul Hollywood might stop sending me pictures of things on Snapchat. Do he keep sending you pictures of soggy bums? Something like that.
big buns. Mm. And also cakes as well. There we go. Um, yeah. I, uh, well, Colin, it's been a pleasure and an honour. Uh, kind of, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite, quite quickie. But you know what? Sometimes it's okay to be quick if you both enjoyed yourself. Is that what your girlfriend tells you every night? <laughs> Whoa! All anyway. right, girl, then you won't believe. Burn. Literal burn. Uh, anyway, so thank you for listening, everybody. It's been a quick one this week, but we'll be back next. Acting off all cylinders, hopefully. If we, uh, if our hair looks better, or if my hair looks better, it looks awful today. Uh, right, so you can contact us through our Twitter at Handheld Podcast. You can email us, heroes of handheld at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, on Google, Plus, on YouTube, on iTunes. Where we are all over the place. Just search Heroes of Handheld on Google, and you will find everything you need to know. So, Chris. Any last Hello. words? That sounds quite um, scary. Yeah, Any parting words? Yeah, uh, not we really. Have a nice... Oh, I'm downloading the uh, uh, an app for 99 apps. Yeah. Uh, whilst you were talking, I found a really good looking one. What is it called? <laughs> it's all about sharks, Colin. What's it called? It is called... Oh, how do I look at my apps on... Uh... Oh, dear. <laughs> categories who knows top charts featured is there a way of looking at like apps i've downloaded um you should be able to if you go to your settings and look under my apps i assume it'll be there um in terms of ones you've previously downloaded oh. and deleted i'm not sure it's called um bear with categories games action. no way the top Sorry. the top app on the app store is bottle flip 2k16 i've got to get me some of that i'll be reviewing uh, that next week i will be playing uh reviewing an app all about sharks it's called as you wait for the app store to load it's called colin hungry shark, shark world hungry shark Maybe. world so i'm sure it'll be great it's a world full of hungry sharks yeah obviously. can't wait what you'd expect so, uh, really great review coming for that next week can't wait anyway thank you for listening everybody we're back same time same place next week have a great week enjoy playing your handheld gaming devices ta-ra bye